Hello, this is a tutorial explaining the method of conjugate gradient descent for finding the numerical solution to a particular system of linear equations. It can also be used to solve unconstrained optimization problems. I will attempt to provide the intuition and mathematical foundation to understand this incredible algorithm. So far, I assume you already have working knowledge of the gradient descent algorithm, and I will try and build up on that principle. So having said that, let's uh, take a function, uh, a quadratic function, uh, <coughs> half ax transpose ax minus b transpose x plus c, where a is a matrix and b is some vector and c is some constant. Um, we'll try and minimize this function. So in order to do that, we take the derivative uh, ax minus b and set that to 0, uh, assuming a is a positive semi-definite matrix. So this gives us a convex function uh, that looks something like this for uh, this particular example where I chose uh, the elements a having 3, 2, 2, 6, b a vector of 2, negative 8, and setting c to 0. So uh, <clears throat> the red mark here is uh, the minimum of this convex function that we will attempt to find using two different methods. First, I'll talk uh, briefly about the gradient descent algorithm and then move on to the conjugate gradient method. But before we look at the equation and how gradient descent exactly works, let me define a couple of key terms. Uh, the first being the error. And the error is uh, simply the difference between the current x that we start with and what the optimal x is. The second and more important term is the residual. And mathematically, the residual is simply how far we are from the optimal value B. <clears throat> but uh, a more intuitive understanding of the residual should think about it as uh, the error um, multiplied by A, which is transformed into the space B. Um, or a better yet understanding, and I, I find this the best, is uh, thinking about it as the the direction of the steepest descent. So the gradient descent algorithm is simply that we take a step xi plus 1 um, <clears throat> from the current position xi in the direction ri with a step size of alpha. The step size could be a constant step size in which case we keep going down uh, possibly the same direction uh, and then turn. However, the flavor I'm talking about here is a line search method. So if you think about your, you fix your current uh, direction of descent, let's say from, uh, from this point right here, and uh, you keep, you, if you imagine a vertical plane intersecting this, uh, uh, this surface, uh, you keep going down that plane, uh, keep going down that intersection until you reach the minimum point in that intersection. So um, let's say that would be somewhere right here. And at that point, um, your, your current gradient would be orthogonal to the residual that is left at that point. So your next step, this here, and then possibly again orthogonal to that space until you until you reach your optimal solution. Now this alpha i that I just wrote out, it seems uh, uh, bizarre how I got it, but I would urge you to look at a derivation. Uh, <clears throat> you know, there's several papers out there that would derive uh, this update uh, rate for alpha for line search. Now this is kind of inefficient uh, if you think about it that if we are trying to traverse a two-dimensional space that is x1 and x2, um, you have to take, you know, four or five steps to reach the optimal solution. Um, ideally, we would just want to take two steps that would get us, or the number of steps uh, equal to the dimensions that we are traversing to get us to the optimal solution. And that's where the conjugate gradient method comes into play. So the conjugate gradient method uh, is based on a 
very neat mathematical trick that says that instead of having the search directions orthogonal to each other, or consecutive search directions orthogonal to each other, as was the case in the gradient descent, which essentially means that the ti transpose ti plus, uh, plus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, rather than having them orthogonal, we should have them a orthogonal or conjugates of each other. And what this essentially means is that d i transpose a t i plus 1 equals 0. Now this might seem strange at first, but here's an intuition uh, behind what is actually happening out here. Imagine you have uh, these vectors in black here on a surface, uh, on a curved surface, uh, which the contours of which I've drawn here in red. Um, now think about if the surface was made of elastic and you stretch it out um, in in two, uh, in the two shorter direct directions and make it into a circle. These black vectors that I've drawn now become orthogonal, and that's exactly what a orthog orthogonality or uh, conjugates are doing onto the surface that we saw for the other quadratic function. So this gives us an update step alpha that is, uh, this is what I've written out here. Um, this might, uh, again I skipped the derivation of how this is obtained but I urge you to look, at, look it up um, offline. If you, if you remember from a few uh, minutes ago, the update for the gradient descent algorithm is, is very similar. If I were to replace all the d's in uh, this equation with the residuals, that's essentially what the gradient descent does. Um, <clears throat> now it turns out, uh, not coincidentally of course, uh, that this update step also uh, takes you to the minimum point uh, along the search direction di just similar to what the gradient descent did. Uh, however, instead of going orthogonal to the previous search direction, we just go A orthogonal. But the size of the step uh, is, is the same uh, even in this uh, equation. So far so good, but how do we obtain these uh, search directions that are A orthogonal to each other? And uh, that's the last part I want to cover in this tutorial, which is a method called the Gram-Schmidt conjugation. So here I'll describe the Gram-Schmidt conjugation uh, without going into the mathematical details behind the process. Let's consider two unit vectors u1 and u2. Uh, we pick uh, the first direction um, d1 which is the same as u1 and then for d2 we take a projection of u2 on d1 and we obtain the next direction d2 by subtracting u2 by uh, the projection of u2 on d1 giving us uh, d2. So the equation becomes d2 equals uh, u2 minus the projection of u2 d1. And this is how you can obtain uh, the search direction for the update alpha. And so t now to visualize how this update would look like, um, Let's say you start off at a similar point where we started off gradient descent. You would move in the same direction that we did as in gradient descent and possibly the same step size. But rather than taking an orthogonal step, you just take a, an A orthogonal step and in that step you would directly reach the optimal solution um, X star. So this is... Uh, is <coughs> a uh, brief idea behind the conjugate uh, gradient method. I hope this helped in solidifying some graphical understanding um, behind what the method does. Thank you for watching.